Thank you. 
Hey y'all, thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah. And however, let's see a show of hands. How many people from Wise County do we have out here? Okay. How many people from not Wise County? How many people have ever attended a GOP meeting? Okay. All right. So hey, I'm going to just speak for a few minutes. We're going to talk about just a little update of what's going on this session, things that are going on with our conservative group this summer. So first of all, I want to talk about this legislative uh, session that we just finally finished. It was like watching a train wreck. So basically what we saw was that we got some weak religious freedom bills. And here's the thing that I want to remind you guys to keep harping on. The only reason we needed religious freedom bills was because the governor didn't adhere to the Constitution that he swore to protect. Amen. We also got a constitutional carry bill. So, hey, that's awesome, right? It's not the best constitutional carry bill. It's more of a permitless carry bill. But, you know, we're going to take it. It's a good place to start. All right, so, next slide. So here's here's some kind of anecdotes. And we, and we're sitting there processing what we just had witnessed, this, uh, this, this very interesting session where, you know, COVID was affecting the beginning of the session, supposedly, I don't know. We saw Republicans take a three-day siesta right before the end of the session. And then they told us, well, we ran out of time. Yeah. That three-day siesta killed the ban on gender, gender mutilation of minors. That was the reason it was taken. Um, it was, I put a video out on our website where we kind of showed Dave Phelan, basically, hey, any, uh, any, he basically just slammed the gavel down, didn't, didn't give anyone to, uh, any chance to object, and uh, that was, you know, appropriately timed to make sure that we didn't get HB 1399, HB 1311, or SB 1646 through. So that basically killed any hope for that bill getting through. That's absolutely reprehensible. There's no way that a situation where we have both houses and the governorship that we didn't get that bill through this session. We also allowed Democrats to chub SB 29, which was going to prohibit boys playing in girls sports. Chubbing is basically at, at submitting endless points of order to prohibit that, 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 that bill from going forward. And the only reason that worked is because the Republicans basically kicked the can down to the point where they were allowed to basically do this. Republicans let the Democrats ultimately on the last day of session break quorum so that they can allow, so that we basically are in a situation where we can say, well, the Democrats did it, right? You know, we didn't get all the bills passed. You know, we just took a three-day break, but it's all the Democrats' fault. So that's what we just saw. We controlled everything, but we're going to blame Democrats. Next slide. Another note, our representative, Phil King, killed, or helped kill SB 10, which was basically the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying. So that... That little chart that we have there, green means yes, let's not uh, consider this bill further. And that's what we saw. So the reds are what you wanted to see, our representative would agree. Next, next slide. So again, what do we hear? We're, we're gonna hear our representative come back. Uh, we already just went down uh, last Thursday, down to Parker County, some of us, to uh, at the GOP meeting, uh, Drew Springer and Phil King. Uh, basically kind of came back and what we heard was, hey, we got a, it was a fairly successful session. We just need a special session to kind of do a little cleanup. That's what we heard. We had 145, 40 days in session. The Senate convened just 61 days. The House convened just 77 days. 313 hours were spent by our legislature. Compare that to previous legislative sessions. 86 legislatures, 334, 339, 366, 345, 472. With all the important things that happened in this particularly important year where the Democrats are shoving all kinds of crazy stuff that I'm through from Washington, D.C., and we only got 313 hours. So, just kind of consider that. So, looking back, now, all, how many people were sitting there doing our uh, request to emails, emailing their legislator, emailing their senator? I really appreciate that. I mean, a lot of you guys have actually working through the emails that you sent back to me and thanking you for doing this, because I, I admit I probably only answered about 50% of those. But, here's what we learned. We learned there's all these different ways you can kill bills without accountability. You can author and co-author a bill you have no intention of passing. We saw that, right? We saw, uh, representative, we saw our Representative King co-author HB 1215, but there was no evidence that that ever made any headway in the state affairs. We saw, um, we saw all these different co-authors of HB 1399, or SB 1399, HB 1399 and SB 1311. None of those were pushing any sort of uh, uh, that bill to move forward in calendars. You can rely on the committee chair to never schedule a hearing. That's a, that's a really good one. You can just blame it on Chris Patty. You know, never made through state affairs. Sorry, we don't have a border wall. 
It's just Patty didn't care about the border wall. It's none of our fault, right? Chris Patty, of course, is going to blame it on everyone else in the committee. Vote for a bill committee knowing that we'll be killed in calendars. Now, that's a really good one, right? We had Dustin Burroughs in charge calendars this session. How many bills died in calendars? But what, what we don't told, what we aren't told by folks, is that anyone in calendars can raise a motion to put the bill on the calendar. That doesn't mean it's going to be on the calendar, but at least there's a motion on record. So what do we see with HB 1399? We saw a motion to put it on the general calendar, not the major calendar. So that's another way. We can actually put it on the calendar, but put it on the wrong calendar. Uh, and then you can claim success. Hey, I voted to put it on the calendar, not knowing, knowing that you probably don't know that there's multiple calendars. We can uh, vote for the bill to, uh, on the floor, knowing that the other chamber will kill it. I think that that, I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect that's probably what happened with constitutional carry. I think that a lot of those folks in the House were really hoping the Senate would not do anything with that bill. But we got it through, and I think that's a victory with grassroots. Um, finally, add a poison pill and force the bill to go to a joint committee. That's what happened to constitutional carry. Remember, uh, there was uh, a number of things in the uh, 1927 that we didn't like. Thankfully, it got pulled out before it was too late. But I think that there was an effort at every step of the way to stop that bill from moving forward. So, next card. Okay, so we've got a few things going on here. We've got a bunch of folks running for governor. Chad Prather, now you guys have seen Chad Prather. He's come to Wise Conservatives. Don Huffines is running for governor. He's also come from Wise Conservatives. I think we'd like to have him back. Yes. Um, Alan West. Presumptively, we haven't heard that yet, but I think we're hoping maybe that we'll hear an announcement before too long. Maybe Sid Miller. So there's a lot of things going on here, and this is where we're at, guys. We're in a situation where this is where our group and groups like us are going to make a difference because we are in a battle against not the Democrats, we're in a battle against the GOP. Mm -hmm. That is the situation that we're going to be in between now and the primary. And there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to like the fact that we're going to say, and why is conservatives going to start? Why is conservatives put out a uh, anti endorsement of, uh, of Greg Abbott last week? Let me read this to you real quick. While the Wise County Conservative Board is not yet prepared to endorse a candidate for the 2022 gubernatorial election, we are prepared to announce that we will not endorse the current governor of Texas, Greg Abbott. In fact, of the 16 million currently registered voters in the state of Texas, well over half of them would earn an endorsement from Wise County Conservatives before Greg Abbott. So that's what I'm saying, guys, is that from here on, this is why this group is here. Because I don't personally at this moment, myself, care who wins as long as it's not him. Well, I don't want to know but I don't think it's in the cards. you? Okay, so a couple other things that are on tap right here. Alan West has resigned as GOP chair. How many people heard that? Yeah. 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 Yes. That's not good, but here's the thing. There are people that have already stood up to the side to run. Matt Rinaldi. Yeah. I sent an email out a couple days ago to give you guys a chance to look at his record. He's one of the most conservative folks that have ever served in the legislature in the last, in this century at least. So uh, look at his record. Uh, we're going to get together as a board and try to, try to make a determination. Please send me your, your feedback. I would like to hear it. But ultimately, the way Dion Starnes, our SRAC, says she wants to handle this is that she wants an individual response from every person in SD30 to say whether you vote for Matt Rinaldi or whoever it happens to be. So we're going to be keeping you guys up to the loop because it's going to be July 11th. This may be one of the most important things we've done so far, is getting out this vote to make sure that she's not one of those swing votes because there's some indication that she might be a swing vote. We want to make sure that whoever the most conservative person is, right now it's Matt Rinaldi, that we need to get those people in there because the thing is, the last thing we want is the Republican Party controlled by Cat Parks. That is not acceptable. This, she supports LGBTQ, all this stuff. So we don't want that. Next slide. Okay, so here's here's a wall here, here, and I want to see a show of hands. One of the things that we need to do as a group is do the opposite of a lot of other conservative and uh, GOP groups do during the summer. We're going to dig in this summer, and we're going to try to reach more people. So one of the things that we have thought about and we're going to suggest that we do is have two Saturdays this summer where we get together in the morning about 8 o'clock, about till it gets hot, four or five hours, we're going to walk, walk in Wise County. We're going to try to reach more people that don't know about the street. I think we'll be surprised. There's a lot of people that are, you know, inside of their homes insulated and aren't knowing what's going on. We can bring them in, we can connect, we can educate them. 
I think that's one of the things we need to be looking to do as a group. So how many people were in? How many people were willing to spend two Saturday mornings to reach more people? Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to, uh, when you get home, email me. We're going to have a, a, a sheet out here as you go out the door. Put your name, email, that's more comfortable for you. And we're going to reach out. And we're going we're gonna to have a good time a couple Saturdays this summer. And we're going to reach more people in West County. Let's start. Okay. So, uh, one of the things we are doing, uh, Amanda, do you want to come up and talk about this real quick? Sorry, Hey guys, um, I hope you can hear me. I'm Amanda Hopper, I'm Andy's wife, if you don't know who I am. We have a voter registrant voter registrar class that we're doing. Um, we need to get new voters registered before the next election cycle, and we need registrars, people who are certified. So anybody can hand somebody a registration card, but you're assuming that they're going to send it in. So what we want to do is have you know, registrars that will take it from them, and we can take it into the elections office once they fill it out. So uh, it's a free training. It's one hour. They're going to do. They're going to keep the elections office open late, uh, 5:30 to 6:30 for us on Thursday the 17th. And uh, you can sign up. Uh, there's a QR code. You can uh, scan it with your phone, or you can email me or come and grab me and say, "Hey, I want to do this. We'd love to see you." Other. Okay. Do we have any elected officials? in the room today, if we didn't be the first time. No elected officials. Okay, that should start telling us something here about just a little data point. Okay. Anybody who is actually uh, running for office, a declared candidate at this moment, that would like to come up and speak for up to a minute? Maybe a little more. Declared candidate? Hi. Hi. I am from Tarrant County. I drove up here because I actually care about everybody. <laughs> I am one of the women's leaders of County, Texas. We were a huge part of making sure that your campus, that your um, Constitutional Carry Act was passed this year. We, and I personally, as one of the leaders, make sure that our children were allowed to carry on campus. That was my doing. I want our children armed. I want our children trained. And I want our children educated from day one. Because they need education and they need gun training. And it's really, really super important. Now, I'm not sure at the moment because there are redistricting things that are going on around the state, and we're not really sure at this point what district we're going to be running in. We won't know that until probably around December. But by the time that it comes around in December, I will have gone around to a lot of people and explained to them why I feel I, I want to be a representative in our house, in our legislature, because we do need true conservatives. We need people who really care about our children, because this is what is on the line. You know, all of us, we're, we're older, okay? But our children are young, and they have a right to grow up in a free society with freedom, protecting their rights. That's what I want to see. And you will hear more about me I currently am blocked off Facebook because I have a big mouth and it's got a very bad like me and I'm a lawyer and I'm poor. So, but that's fine. I passed gun law. I'm able to do that because I have nothing that they could take away from me. And that's the way I'm going to stay. So I'm going to need you all to back me up. All right? Don't forget, because I do you have page up yeah but it's just kind of rough right now so thank you we have a candidate I know we have at least one in the back of the room okay all right 
So with that said, we're going to pass the hat right now, and uh, I want to introduce uh, our speaker. So you don't have to get too involved in Texas politics to realize that there is this legendary figure that everyone looks up to and mourns the loss of in the House that basically fought for our ideals, fought for our principles. You can, you don't have to go anywhere and see pictures of, you know, Dennis ba or Bonin sitting there staring down, you know, Jonathan Stiglin. And it was, it, you know, here's the thing, this, this guy is legendary. He was the House representative up until last year for HD92. Um, and uh, I tell you what, now that I've gotten into this process a little bit more and actually witnessed this the thought process of this guy and the, uh, the, the attitude and the fierceness and the, the tenacity, um, I've been extremely impressed. So I'm going, I'm, just like y'all, I am going to be learning everything I can from this guy tonight. Uh, I want to introduce Jonathan Stiffel. y'all have never heard me speak before any time ever. Okay, a lot of you. All right. Um, well, I'll tell you real quick, I've got a special guest here. Um, my mother is actually here, Jenny Stickland. And uh, this is, she actually only heard me speak twice because um, after raising me in Hearst, Hewlett, Bedford, and Tarrant County my entire life, I got elected. And uh, then they immediately moved to Alaska, uh, which was, you know, not planned. I told her it was cold, and uh, she figured it out finally after seven <laughs> years. So she's back to Texas, living in uh, Crescent. So, um, so I am Jonathan Stickland. I served in the Texas House of Representatives for eight years. And I actually hold the record for having the most money spent against me in the Texas legislature in a primary and general election um, in the history of Texas. Well, that means I made a lot of people upset. And um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we also had some of the biggest grassroots victories. We actually never lost. Eight and eight, uh, eight for eight, undefeated. And there was one simple reason. It was because you guys, the grassroots, stood behind us the entire time. The Austin Lobby and the establishment, uh, they threw everything they had at us. Um, I had to answer for uh, posts that I had put on the internet when I was 16 years old. I mean, they cut up our lives and tried to fillet us and do everything else. Uh, but the truth is, is that the people stood with us. And I learned very early on in my career that every single elected official has a very simple decision to make. You see, you cannot be popular in Austin with those people down there and still go back home and tell the truth to voters. You have to make a conscious decision. And if you don't make a conscious decision, they end up making it for you. And a little naive me, I was 27 years old, I'm actually a high school dropout, second elected official in Texas history to have a GED, me right here. If that's not proof that I didn't plan uh, to ever run for office, I don't know what is. But I'm the guy that wasn't supposed to win. I was 27 years old. I got conned into running against a 16-year incumbent, a guy by the name of Todd Smith. And for those of you that don't know much about politics, having the name Todd Smith is a really good ballot name, OK? <laughs> yeah. Much better than Jonathan Stickland, which everyone tries to throw an R into. We actually had to end up uh, buying JonathanStrickland.com because people were like, I'm emailing you, and we're not hearing back. Did you put an R in it? No. I once got a $10,000 donation from a guy made out to the Strickland campaign, but we took it and the bank got used to it over time. But my point is, I was 27 years old, taking on a 16-year incumbent, trial lawyer with a bunch of degrees up on the wall. He'd been a chairman down in the Texas House and he had a million dollars in the bank. A million dollars in the bank. How many of you have seen your property taxes go up? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How many of you guys realize that the border is less secure today than it ever has been before? How come we're having to come down here and talk about a victory with Republicans in charge of every aspect of state government and we're happy about getting constitutional care? Yeah. Permitless care. Yeah, permitless care. Thank you. Permitless care. I filed that bill for six years and that was a much better constitutional care bill. But we, for years, have been sitting around and enjoying little favors. How 
pacifiers in our mouth from elected officials. For almost 20 years, we've been in complete control of the Texas government. Yet state spending has gone up like this. When I came into office eight years ago, nine years ago now, Rick Perry was governor, and the all-in state budget in the state of Texas, this includes money that we drew down from the federal government, this includes rainy day fund money, this includes everything, $176 billion. Today we have Republicans trying to sell us that the budget that they passed which is over $265 billion is somehow conservative. That's just in eight years. And ladies and gentlemen, year after year, these people come to us and they tell us how bad the progressive liberals have taken over the Democrat Party and how bad the Democrats are if they get elected. But the truth is, is that every single one of us has to look in the mirror and realize Democrats didn't do any of it here in Texas. It was people with an R next to their name that have trampled on our rights, spent our money, taxed us into oblivion, and opened up our border to be taken over. This is an invasion, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. I had a friend that went down to the border just a couple of weeks ago, and he was down there doing a tour with a couple of mayors. And the mayor was showing them on the side of the streets it looked like there had been a parade that went through downtown of this man's city along the border. Because there were little pieces of paper strung out, almost looked like pieces of confetti, that went down both sides of the street. And he said, what is all this stuff right here? And he said, they're arm bracelets. Y'all heard about the arm bracelets? Yes. You see, the cartels that are trafficking all of these people over here, they don't just do it out of the goodness of the heart. They're turning these people into objects. It's basically slavery. Because to get past the cartels in every region that you go past, you have to pay. And when you pay, you get a bracelet. And they collect four or five, six different bracelets as they are funneled through and trafficked through Mexico and come into Texas. And as soon as they finally land somewhere where they can enjoy the things that we've built here that our taxes have paid for, they cut them off and they just leave them on the side of the street. And the mayor of the town was explaining, we tried to pick these things up. I mean, there are thousands of them littered through his street. But it's useless. Because they're coming over by the thousands every single day. We just moved out to Willow Park, Texas. Y'all know where that is? It's the country to me, because I grew up in the suburbs of Tarrant County. I'm like, wow, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cowboy now. Uh, we actually own 31 chickens, which... Uh, was an interesting discussion because um, I had talked to my wife Chrissy who's really loving having some land and a barn and, and all that fun stuff and, and I said man it would be really cool to have chickens one day uh, which is kind of a theoretical thing and then I came home the other night and I opened the front door and there was a red glow coming from down the hallway in my living room and I'm like what's going on? And it looked like a red light district down there. And then I hear my wife say, Honey, we need to talk. And I'm thinking, oh, this could be good. And so I start walking down the hallway, and it's not what I had hoped for. It's a heat lamp. And there's a big bin with these little chicks in there. And I'm thinking, I don't have a coop. I don't have anything. Like, I have no idea. I have a golden retriever. That's about as close as I get to this. So I ended up going on YouTube and uh, typing in, you know, uh, things to know about owning chickens. And the first thing that popped up is a little YouTube video with the five things not to do for first-time chicken owners. And we had four of the five uh, now, now as a family, but we're struggling through it. It's good. Uh, but we moved out to Willow Park. The population of Willow Park, Texas right now is 5,200 people. Okay? Little town. You realize that we are creating a new Willow Park every single day with the number of illegals that are crossing just the Rio Grande sector in this state. This is no longer a situation where me and you get to talk about the long-term effects of, of having an open border. This is right here. This is ruining cities and towns and communities. 
Every single day. Do you realize that we still pay for so much of the stuff that these guys are getting for free? Do you realize that your county hospitals aren't allowed to ask whether someone here is legally or not? They just have to provide the service. And for those of us that actually have health insurance or pay our bills, what do you think that does to the cost of health care? To our tax rate? We're seeing it every single day. You realize the Republicans in the state of Texas, when in complete control of the government, decided that it would be a good idea to subsidize college tuition for illegals. Yes. You realize it's better to come here illegally right now than to move here from Oklahoma? There was someone in our Sunday school class um, just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we started praying for them. They brought up a prayer request, and they said, please uh, pray for some, some medical stuff that we have going on. Because it looked like their health insurance wasn't going to cover it. And they came to me, and they said, hey, do you have any suggestions? Are there any charities? Are there anything you know, going on? Do you know what I had to look her in the face and tell her? If you claim to be illegal, you don't have to pay anything. If you will lie and say you're an illegal, you won't have to worry about anything. Do any of us actually think that this is sustainable? No. A year and a half ago, I, uh, I got to experience a lot of you guys getting to see for the first time what I've known found out the hard way the last eight years being down there with a lot of these elected officials. For years, Greg Abbott has run around and gotten a campaign as conservative. Watch him on Fox News. I saw him on Hannity the other night getting praised for closing down the border and addressing it. I was in the room when the Trump administration came down to the legislature begging us to go around Governor Abbott, who was refusing to declare an emergency on the board. The Trump administration came to Texas and said, we need you to declare an emergency, because if you do it, then we have all this money that we can use towards securing the border. Remember when Congress and the Democrats were holding up the funding for the wall? There was a way around it. We didn't have a governor that was willing to do it. And then a year later, they came back and said, we've got some funds, we've got five billion, we want to keep going, but we're going to need you to help us get some of this land cleared out so we can actually build it. And Abbott's team's response was writing a letter out of the public siding with Mexico opposing Trump's trade deals and telling us no. It's not an accident that nothing has happened on the board. I need you to understand that because it's hard. Because it, it, it requires every single one of us to have an honest conversation with ourselves and realize that we have been duped. You're looking at a Greg Abbott supporter. I endorsed him. I gave him money at one point. Those who are down there realize that so many of these people are fake conservatives. I, I, call, them, I call them campaign conservatives because you listen to them, and I've never seen one person run as a moderate Republican. Have you ever heard that in your entire life? No. They all campaign as a conservative, but what is happening down there is not what any of you would ever expect. But then, a year and a half ago, all of you got to take a sneak peek at what Greg Abbott and some of these other people actually think about the Constitution. You got to see one man who was elected into a constitutional republic start acting like he's a king. 
You got to see him with the swipe of a pen say that every single one of us has to stay home. And that this business, this business, uh, maybe not that one, but this business, they all have to shut down. We witnessed, in a matter of days, the biggest job-killing move that any of us have ever seen. And it wasn't Joe Biden, it wasn't Barack Obama, or Nancy Pelosi, or AOC, or all the people they want to gaslight us on being upset with. It was Greg Abbott, who Texans elected as a conservative Republican, who mandated that every single one of us had to do what he said. Three million Texans lost their jobs in 30 days. We still don't know how many thousands of businesses will never open again. We saw a man come out and give 290 million of our dollars on a whim, on an idea of paying a company who had never done it before to do contract tracing on every single one of us. This notion that our relationship with the doctor is between us and the physician shattered. They are now going to be required to put you into a database. These are things, I don't know about you, but these are things that became reality that were like a bad, ugly conspiracy theory just a couple of years ago. These are things that you read about in a sci-fi novel playing out in the most conservative state in this country. And the sad thing about it is, is when I was a legislator, we used to get phone calls all the time from different states. And I, I'm not sure that we quite understand this. Texans were proud of being in Texas. We like leading. We like doing it first. The rest of the country actually saw that. And they looked to us. And when I first got elected, I would get calls from Oklahoma and Kansas and Missouri and Florida and all these different Republicans who would call into Texas and say, hey, what are y'all going to do about this? What are y'all going to do about that? And they were all waiting for us to lead the way. Because you have to understand, the state of Texas by itself is like the eighth largest economy in the world. Just the state of Texas. And these little small states that don't have those kind of numbers, they depend on somebody with the resources and the people and the financial ability and the landscape to lead on some of these issues. And we used to. Texas used to be one of the pro most pro-life states in the country. In fact, we were ranked number three. You know what we are right now? 19. We used to be a leader in the Second Amendment. And we watched 22 other states pass constitutional or permanent carry before we did. Bernie Sanders in Vermont had permitless carry before every single one of you did. Texas has gone from first in job creation in the nation to 14th in unemployment percentage wise. We have gone from being the rock in the Republican primary in the electoral college to playing second fiddle to Ron DeSantis in Florida and Christy Nome in North Dakota. And I don't know about y'all, but it really ticks me off. It makes me very upset. Because for my entire voting life, I have gone to the ballot box thinking that I was electing somebody and voting for somebody who understood that government exists to protect the rights of citizens, not to do anything else. I thought I was voting for more freedom and less government. And we haven't got that. And the sad thing is, is that instead of actually being accountable to some of these things, many of us have fallen into the trap of being mad at the Democrats instead of the ones who can actually make it happen. One of the things that I learned when I got into the Texas House uh, very quickly was that it was powerful to know the rules. Uh, when I was first elected, I was 27. I remember um, no one covered my election at all. 
because no one expected me to win. And I don't know if you remember this or not, Mom, but uh, Bud Kennedy with the Four Word Star Telegram who's just a look, oh, exactly. He needs to stick to giving uh, food food reviews. He was a food critic, and then they had to cut back, so now he's a political guy, too. But Bud Kennedy called up on election night, and they were like, wow, uh, Representative Stickland, you won. What's your plan? And having had no media training at all, and uh, no real campaign except for what we kind of put together, I said, well, um, I'm going to watch some YouTube videos and see if I can learn how the floor works. Because I had never been to Austin prior to winning my election. And it was at that point when we won, I thought, man, I want to go down there and I want to do a good job. And someone told me, they said, you know, if you will learn the rules of the Texas House, um, that will give you a lot of power. Because you can use the rules to your benefit on legislation and, and parliamentary procedure and all this stuff. So I ended up uh, having a buddy who gave me a version of the Texas House rules. And it's a book about this thick. It's the lamest reading you will ever have in your entire life. But I read it front to back like six or seven times. Dang near memorized a stupid thing. Now this wasn't because I had some grand plan at the point. It was honestly just to avoid being embarrassed. Because I had no idea what I was getting into. But I get down there. And I've got all this knowledge of the rules, and I learned on day two, which is the day that you actually vote on the rules and have some debates on what's going on. I realized very quickly that the rules don't really matter. In fact, the rules are secondary to tradition. Tradition. That's just, this is the way we do things, they try to tell. Representative Stickland, I know it says that, but we don't do things like for each other's bills. In fact, I get down there and I realized very quickly when we started voting on stuff that the mass majority of things that were happening down in Austin didn't receive a vote at all. Think about that for a second. You guys remember when Obamacare first passed? Do you remember that that was a bill about veterans? And it came to the floor in the middle of the night and it was stripped on an amendment and turned into the biggest expansion of socialized medicine this country had ever seen? This stuff was happening every single day in the Texas House floor. In fact, I could have a bill that did one thing, have an amendment to the bill that completely changed the original purpose, and there would never be a record vote on how it was changed. But then I remember that one member could stand up and say record vote. And I thought, how are all these things happening without a vote? So I started calling record votes. That. <laughs> Piss them off is not the right word, but there are children, so I won't use it. But you get the point. This entire Texas legislature was a pre-plan, pre-ordered. Theatrical performance on 99% of everything that came before. In fact, I remember my freshman year, there were like three bills out of 5,000 votes that actually was voted no on the floor. Because nothing got to the floor unless they wanted it to pass. Nothing came out of calendars unless leadership signed off on it. Nothing got a hearing unless the lobbyists said, okay, let's do it. The whole thing was a joke. And for a while, I was super discouraged. And then I had a guy tell me, you know, Jonathan, if you will just focus in on doing things that will upset these guys, it'll probably end up really good for the folks back home. You see, I knew very quickly that I could not vote as a real conservative and go against the grain and tick off my colleagues and call record votes, and use the rules against them, and get any of the normal support that a candidate got. I had one plan to be able to continue to move the conservative agenda, and that was to wake up the grassroots back at home. And my theory was to wake up the people back at home, they have to see what is really happening. I decided that I could single-handedly, by raising my hand and saying record vote, or by single-handedly offering an amendment to make something stronger, or to make something more conservative, that none of them could stop me. And that there would be enough people back at home who would be watching, 
And all I needed for them to do was to know the truth. My idea and my political theory was very simple. That the people back at home, you guys here in this crowd today, it was safer to keep liberty and the conservative issues in your control rather than the politicians. And for you guys to have control, you needed to know what was going on. You needed to know who the bad guys were. You needed to know who the phonies were. You needed to know what was really happening and who was responsible for the death of the bills. And we went from almost all of the votes not being record votes, especially on amendments, to calling for record votes over 500 times in the first session. We went from letting these things sail through on their fake calendar called the local and consent calendar to slaughtering over 800 of them by standing up just by myself. Now, I don't say this to brag because I am a recovering politician. I'm not running for anything else. I enjoy being married. My life has been threatened. So this is what you're getting. I'm not here asking for your vote. I'm here to tell you what is really happening. I'm here to tell you that we are being lied to. I'm here to tell you that Republicans are to blame for the problems in the state of Texas, not Democrats. But I'm here to tell you that one person can make a true difference. I learned very quickly that the most valuable resource in Austin was courage. And the reason that courage was so valuable is because it's so rare. Everyone was so afraid of upsetting each other and not afraid of the people back home. One of the common traits between every single person that I saw in Austin was that every single one of these elected officials had a unique ability to read a room. They had the ability to try and figure out where the safe place for them to be was. And usually, they ascribed to the political theory that being not noticed was their best plan for re-election. Do you know how Phil King keeps representing you in the Texas House? I think we're at year 22 right now. I didn't make me white flag Phil. Phil's not an evil person. Phil's not a bad guy. You would leave your kids with him and he would take care of them. But Phil has been there too long. Phil cares more about what the people down there think about him than he does you. Phil would love to do the right thing, but he doesn't have the courage to fight for it. And that's not just unique here in Wise County. It's the same story where I get to speak in almost every single house district across the state. In fact, there's only like four guys that I would ever even support for re-election out of 150. And that's super depressing to think about. But here's the truth. Here's the good news. Phil King's going to watch this online. <laughs> yeah. Phil King's going to count how many people were in the room. Phil King's going to hear about who was here and who wasn't. Because if Phil King concludes that he has to do something to stay elected, he's going to do it. And the good news for us is, is that Phil is looking at groups and people like this to try and figure out what he can get away with. We've seen it time and time again. You realize that the two legislative priorities that Andy had listed up here, we're not going to happen until Don Buffon's announced for governor. Yes, exactly. You realize that none of the stuff that we're kind of going, okay, thanks for doing your job, would not have even been done if these guys didn't feel pressure. You want to get something done in politics? You want to know what every single one of them cares about? They don't need your love. They don't even need your money. They don't even really need your vote necessarily. They're terrified of feeling pressure and pain from you. Pressure and pain, pressure and pain. Where do I need to be on every single issue? What's the least amount I can do to stick a pacifier in their mouth to keep them quiet? Best path to re-election is to not have an opponent. The best path to not have an opponent is to not be noticed. Phil King ain't running around doing anything, good or bad. He's lukewarm. If you guys think that we're going to be able to legislate our liberties back in this country and in this state, you're lying to yourself. The only way 
Did we have a chance to save this thing if it's not too late already? It's to bring pressure and pain. And you say, Jonathan, how do I do that? I'm going to tell you. Every single one of us has a way to apply pressure and pain. In fact, Bill King knows every single person that matters in his district. He knows you, Mike. Who's your wife? Definitely knows you now. Your wife. He knows this group. He knows Parker County Conservatives. He knows Concerned Women for America and Texas Rights of Life. He knows every single one of you that has any influence at all. And he's going to try and make this personal. Because that's what politicians are great at. I'm your friend. Some of them will even have meetings with you. Okay? Lynette, he'll take your phone call, won't he? They will. You matter by doing things. Some people can matter by giving money. Some people can matter by being active. Serving in the Republican Party as a precinct chair. Being on doors. Talking in your Sunday school class. Showing up to groups like this. They're measuring all of your influence. There's 180,000 voters in Phil King's House District. 180,000. He does not have time to talk to every single person. So he's only going to talk to, listen to, and then be influenced by the people that matter in that 180,000. So you want to matter? You're going to have to start doing it. And the good news is, we have a true patriot, Andy over here, who has stepped up to lead this effort. Woo! You see, coming together in groups like this, I just have to stop real quick and say, four or five months ago? Can't remember. Four or five months ago? What was it? October, maybe? Lynette calls me and says, hey, Andy Hopper, great guy. I've gotten to know him. And he's thinking about starting a group. You should go talk to him. And I met Andy at this little restaurant, and we had a discussion. And I was like, Andy, you want to make a difference, you start a group. Start a group and educate the people in the area. Start a group and tell people the truth. Because once you learn some of these truths, then you, you start to see things. And Andy had not really even been that politically active. Fair? Fair. Fair. But I knew Andy was going to be awesome because he only half, halfway trusted me. I mean, this guy was sitting, and I'm not even running for anything, but he's sitting across the table from me, and he's like, oh, no, if what you're saying is true. And I was like, yes. This guy is not going to be wooed by any politician and the gift of gab. All we need are people who are going to actually look at the records. In fact, at one point, Andy was like, hey, well, I talked to Phil about this thing or that thing, and, and he told me this. And I'm like, well, that's nice, sounds great, but look at this. And Andy's like, oh, gosh, incredible. Once you realize that these people are not our friends, and their job is to make everything personal, that means your job is to make everything not personal. I'm not up here because I have an axe to grind with Phil King. I just want Phil King to stop lying. I want Phil King to do what he campaigns on. What I hear him talk about with people at his church. Because I've been behind the, the room, in the smoke-filled room, where the deals are made and things are done. And it's all a joke. And anyone that perpetuates that system has to be our enemy. It doesn't mean we hate them. It doesn't mean anything else. They're trying to make it personal. We have to make it unpersonal. We have to look at the facts. That's why Greg Abbott has to go. Greg Abbott is a nice guy. Greg Abbott's biggest problem is, is that he's a judge. You realize this is the first time he's ever been challenged in the Republican primary in 30 years. He didn't have one when he was district judge. He didn't have one when he ran for the Supreme Court. He didn't have one when he ran for Attorney General. And he hadn't had one for Governor. Greg Abbott has never had to be held accountable by Republicans in a primary. There's no one good down there that hasn't had to run in a primary. You need these people to fight for it. You need these people to earn your vote. You need these people in the district and out of Austin so they get a dose of reality. The truth is, is the rest of the country thinks that Texas is a conservative bastion. You want to know why? Because they look at us and we're conservative people. 
We want to be left alone. We're not looking for a handout. We believe in the right to exist. We believe in, that life is precious and ordained from the Lord. We believe in the Bible. We believe in these things. And so people look at Texas and they say that must be a great place. But the facts say something else. The facts say that we are paying through the roof when it comes to property taxes. Third highest in the nation when you add all the local stuff together. We're in debt up to our eyeballs. Our grandkids will never pay our debts right now if we stop. We have to start looking at the facts. We have to stop worrying about what other people think. You can't go home and be mad at any elected official who's playing the game down there when you're too afraid to put up a conservative yard sign in your yard and claim who you are. We can't be mad at the lobbyists. And by the way, there's 17,000 registered lobbyists in the state of Texas alone. For 150 people, there's 17,000. You want to get mad about the people who are influencing these guys? But you won't take out your checkbook and give a $5 donation to somebody that sticks their neck out on the line and runs for it? You see, for years, the left has been successful in growing government and trying to replace the church with government. How many of you remember when every church had a food pantry? Yeah. Most of them are gone now. Why? Because people don't want to go to church and, and have to talk to the pastor and tell them what's wrong with their life and deal with all of that when they get to stand in line and get a free debit card from the government. You remember when all the churches were named after, or all the hospitals were named after churches? No. Now they're all huge medical conglomerates. You want to know why? Because they started chasing uh, government dollars. Started expanding Medicaid. Went from being a ministry to a business. We have allowed this to happen. And folks, I'm just telling you right now, the way that society has been built on these ideas, that they've shoved down our, our, our necks, we can't just change it tomorrow. They've been building society on big government being a part of everyone's life. That's why over half of the people are getting handouts from the government. We're completely outnumbered. More of us in Wise County take from the government than give. We're addicted to it. The only way we get off is if we start taking personal responsibility. The only way we get off the government literally taking care of everyone is that we have to start taking care of ourselves and our family and our neighbors and our church. We're not just going to go be able to turn off all these hospitals that are giving away free health care and giving free food and free education and free everything tomorrow. The church is going to have to start doing it again. Yes. It used to be that if you had a problem, you would go to the pastor or the church, and not only would you get help with the specific thing that you needed help with, but you got a little dose of Jesus, which we all know that that's what people really need, right? Right. Amen. I'm just telling you guys, nine years ago, I got tricked into running for Texas House of Representatives. And uh, the main reason that my wife agreed to it at the time is she said, I'm sick of watching you throw your shoe at the TV. you got to do something about it. <laughs> and I did. And I'm proud of what we did. And I know I made a difference. And I've never talked to one person who became a political activist for the conservative movement who regretted the work that they put in. Not that they don't get frustrated. But I promise you, it feels good. People ask me all the time, what are you going to talk about tonight? I have no idea. If you haven't figured it out, I didn't plan a speech tonight. I got nothing memorized. I have no talking point. But it's awesome that I get to show up here in Wise County and tell the truth. Amen. It's real easy to talk when you get to tell the truth. Right. And I'm just telling you guys, I sleep good at night, knowing that I fought for liberty. And it's not always easy, but I'm proud to do it. And you should be too. Here's the truth. This group is going to be as powerful as what you guys put into it.
if you want to cause pressure and pain, and make the wrong guys who are in office do the right thing, then you got to be noticed. Be noticed, you got to keep showing up. There are groups like Wise County Conservatives popping all up over the state of Texas. I know because I'm speaking in a lot of them, and it's exciting. In fact, I will tell you, I think there's more energy right now than the Tea Party movement back in, you know, 10 years ago. Because people are fed up. President Trump showed up and started showing us what a lot of us knew. We went from theories to facts. And there's a whole new wave of people who are at the end of their road. And we have two choices. Give up or keep fighting. And I'm here to tell you I've never been more encouraged since I've been involved in politics. It's not just this group. It's happening all over the state. And they're freaking out. That's why we're going to get a special session. That's why we're going to get some more conservative stuff done. Because they're looking at all of us and all of you. And they are concluding that that wasn't enough. So I'm going to say this before I start taking a couple of questions. Keep showing up. Take control of your government. Do your part. And I really think we can change these things. All right. Do we have a microphone? Do y'all have any questions? Let's... Got a few minutes. Sir. Stand up. Yeah. Um, as a county, I have been at Papa Dolphins. He's been at Mike's meetings. And I want your interpretation of this courage. Matt Rinaldi is the best thing that could ever happen to us. Literally um, was my best friend in the Texas House um, when I was down there. I have zero doubt. Um, listen, I've helped a lot of these people get into office. I've been disappointed by more than I've been happy with. And I can tell you, yeah, Jeff Leach is one of them. We stay here all night naming names. Um, but I helped and endorsed a lot of these people. I am very guarded now about my endorsement because I've just seen so many people fall. And I do want to say this too, because I need y'all to understand this. If you had left me down there for long enough, I would have turned too. You need to hear that. It is an evil place. And while my soul has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, my body has not yet been. And if I had been down there long enough, I eventually you would not have noticed me. Thank God I got to get out on my own terms before being rejected by my neighbors. I'm just telling you guys right now, I went into this thing not thinking term limits is what we need. I definitely support term limits now after being down in there. Matt Rinaldi is excellent. Every single one of you should call Dion Starnes immediately. Dion, you need to support Matt Rinaldi or we're kicking you out too, please. And I love you. The other thing is, I want to say this too. I've been very hard on Greg Abbott. Um, there are other people who are going to be getting into this. I don't care who gets in. Don Huffines is who I am convinced to be in the state of Texas. I've served with him. And you look at his actual record and what he did, and he is the real deal. That guy was homeschooling his family before it was even legal in Texas. Okay? I mean, this guy is a true patriot through and through. I don't even want you to like, just take my word for it. Go look for yourself. Look at his own record. Look at the bills that he filed. Look at who he's been donating to for 30 years. This is the best chance we've ever had, in my opinion. But no matter what, we all need to be a part of no one, no one, <laughs> not break out. Yes. Heather. Oh, well, I appreciate that, but I, my 31 chickens need me in a little part, so I, 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 I appreciate that. Um, the, the, the guys who I would look to in the Senate, there's one, Bob Hall. That's the other one. Uh, in the House, I would support um, Jeff Kaysen. Yes. Brian Slayton. He's the real hero. Um, uh, Kyle Biederman and Tony Tenderholt. Okay, that's it. Everyone else is like, oh, from there. 
Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Um, I've been working for uh, Matt today, Matt Rinaldi, and I emailed every S R E C, whatever those word, those letters are, and um, the feedback that I'm getting so far is they, a lot of them are already in the camp for Rinaldi because they know it. But there are some out there that don't really know him, and they're wanting to hear from us. So they're taking polls. So encourage your friends and neighbors to call your districts. Uh, there's just two people that you have to, well, you can email them. Um, you just look it up on the internet, you just click email, it'll take you to the thing, and you just email them and say, I'm, you know, this is the guy I'm supporting. I'm supporting Matt Rinaldi. I'm also supporting Don Huffines, and I'm doing everything I can to get both of them elected. So I just wanted to let you know that that is happening behind the scenes. They want to hear from us. They do want to hear from you, and they're also trying to gauge. So be a part of that gauge, all right? Uh, they're all trying to figure out where they need to be. And I can promise you, they all know who calls them. And they're counting who calls on what issue. And they're using that to base their decisions on. So I'd say uh, if you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with any of your SREC, that's the best. Second best is phone calls into them. Third best is text messages. And fourth best is emails. And I'm sure, Andy, maybe we can send out an email to the group to how to contact their people. But that stuff does matter. You want to apply the pressure as they're making the decision on where they need to be. And you can have an impact on that. Can I, Mike. can I answer Joe's question about whether Matt and all the has courage or not? Well, you can. Not, not, not whether he has courage. That's not what I asked. Oh, so I asked a low of his courage. Okay. So, so he's the guy who, on the protest on the Sanctuary Cities, when we were working on that bill. Amen, brother. Well, I'm better than you are at that. So I'm going to tell the story. Right there. <laughs> None of that is a representative of the House District. This is leading Matt, to Matt called ICE. ICE. Matt called ICE with about yes. 2,000 legal aliens in there. But my favorite story, Jonathan, is when his wife Coralie told me the story about Matt. And she said she came home one day crying because Matt was being called racist all over Facebook because he was he was speaking out against illegal immigration. And she came home crying and said, What are you crying about? I said, They think you're a racist. And he got a big smile on his face. And she basically confessed that you can walk up to Matt Rinaldi and call him brilliant, call him courageous, and it doesn't do anything. It bounces right off of him. But when you tell him that the left is saying these really despicable things about him, that's the only thing that affects him emotionally. He gets happy. That <laughs> exactly. So when that happened on the Texas House floor, there were like, I don't know, there's like 30 uh, Hispanic members in the Democrat caucus. And um, at the time, the Freedom Caucus, there were like 10 of us. And it was the last day of session. And if you go back, you can watch the House footage there. But Matt actually called ICE on all the protesters who were disrupting. Because they had signs that said, we're here illegally and we're not leaving and all this stuff. And like, they were chanting, they were attacking police officers. I mean, it was yes. literal chaos. Bad. By the way, thanks for all you guys and doing what you do. Law enforcement. But you do know that the majority of us support you guys. Right. Amen. Right. Thank you all for what, for what you do. I, I love law enforcement. I like you guys individually a lot more than some of your lobbyists down in Austin because some of them are some union guys. But, yeah. but law enforcement, we need to stand behind them. They're under attack for sure. Um, but we were on the floor and there were like 30 or 40 and they knew they weren't going to be on TV and it was this big thing. And so there were only like five of us in the Freedom Caucus at the time. And I remember, you can go look at it on YouTube, but Matt's here and I, I noticed there's a scuffle, like literally a fight to break out. So I kind of go in the middle and Matt Schaefer, who's about four inches taller than me, big guy in, in the Army right now, in the reserves, he had his brand new newborn in one hand. And, and all of a sudden, like literally a fight broke out and it was like five against 30. And they're pushing and all this stuff, and Matt's got his baby, and we're like, I mean, it's literally like they were trying to punch him in the face. And uh, I will just tell you, most people would respond to that kind of pressure and literal death threats. Uh, DPS took us back down and let us out secret passages in the Capitol because the people were going ballistic. Most would have stopped. Matt went on Fox News. 
Yes. And Matt doubled down on it. And to me, that's the kind of leader that we need who's that's going awesome. to continue exactly. to fight back. Because I'm just telling you guys right now, they're not going to give us back our liberties if we ask for them nicely. No. These people want to fundamentally change the world. You understand that liberals, true leftists, the ultimate goal, because they are at war with God, is a one world government that is going to be controlled by the Antichrist. Like, they all know that. Some of them know that more than others, but the root of this is centralized government on a global scale. That is why we have to fight back for smaller government. And I'm just going to say this, and it's probably going to get on Twitter eventually, but Texas is more important than everybody else, and we cannot let her go down Amen. just because... Couple more questions and then we'll cut it up. Yes, sir. Can you comment on text it? On text it? Yeah. I think I, I think that we have to start looking at it right now. Um, I will tell you, it scares me to death with the current elected officials that we have, uh, because like Greg Abbott is president of Texas, uh, not going to happen if we can actually show that we can educate the masses again and expose the corruption then I absolutely think that we need to start thinking about it. I think we need to start uh, planning for it, and we need to absolutely um, realize that Texas is worth saving, regardless of what happens around us, to the north, south, east, or west. We have to fight for Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. We've got about 30 seconds left. Can you comment in regards to the one world government and push for that, and it being a progressive idea, but with your experience in the house as well, talking about that our true enemy isn't the Democrats, but the right old Republicans, are they the hooks to us? I mean, it, it, uh, that's what I'm literally telling you. I'm telling you that like I fought more with Republicans in the Texas House than I did Democrats. Because here's the thing: like if we're in a fair fight, you know, if we're if we're going to square up and we're going to go at it on an issue, I want to know who I'm fighting. And the Democrats will stand there and they'll own it. They'll fight you head on. It's when Phil King comes around the back and goes, Phoom, and I don't even see him, and he, get, he shanks me in the back. That's what killed almost everything conservative. I mean, I, I, I served when we had a supermajority in the Senate, two away from a supermajority in the House, and every statewide elected official was a Republican. So if something didn't get done, if the Democrats are only as strong as Republicans allowed them to be, like, it's a joke. You wait. If we ever see this state turn blue, these guys aren't going to work with Republicans. They're going to steamroll us. Just, I'll give them credit. Democrats know how to win. Republicans are horrible at winning. Like, get out of the freaking way. The voters gave us a majority, and we're going to pass our agenda. And we're not going to apologize for it. But this is not the attitude. The attitude is that we need to work with the Democrats. And, and sadly, we see that play out. I mean, I will tell you, there are a list of... 40 or 50 state reps that are Republicans right now in Texas, that if they thought that they could get away with it, would rather be Democrats. Yeah. They would rather vote as Democrats. And it's it's crazy. We have one who's been our congresswoman for years, Kay Granger. I mean, you realize Kay Granger, like, is one of the most liberal people in all of the country, right? She's not just like, oh, a moderate rhino. She literally caucuses and works with the Democrats. And enriches herself off our tax dollars with Panther Island and all these scandals, and we still can't get rid of her. I'm just going to tell you guys this right now. You can look on a map in the state of Texas, and the people that I mentioned, whether it was Bob Hall, or myself, and now Jeff Kaysen, Kyle Biederman, Tony Tenderholt, Brian Slayton, you want to know what they all have in common? Every single one of them has a local conservative meetup group who is strong and active in the community. Because even if you guys get someone elected, like you were to get rid of Phil King and put in like a true patriot in there, it ain't gonna do you much good if you can't defend them. And I can promise you this, if you end up getting somebody good who actually does what he says they're gonna do, they're gonna come at him just the way they came at me. With fire and millions and millions of dollars. And the only way you're gonna be able to insulate them is to have a base of support. You can walk, look at a heat map where the conservative legislators are on a map. And behind every single one of them are strong local meetup groups. Every single one of them. Um, what is it that we can do?
do to affect change with this speaker crap. I mean, I've been watching for years Republican speakers that are really Democrats that, you know, I'm sorry, but if we have the majority, why are they putting Democrats in charge of committees? Yeah. Why is any of that happening? We need to do what the Democrats do, because right now the DNC is pouring money yep. into this state yep. to turn us blue. Again, all we can do is directly the people that that are over us. And, and, and folks like yourself, there's a few people here who aren't in Phil King's district and coming from Tarrant County and other stuff. Like, you don't have to be limited just to your area. But I'm just going to tell you guys right now, the speaker is a big problem because they caucus with the Democrats. That's where they start with their base of support. Then they just need a couple of Republicans to elect the majority because you only need 76. But the biggest, easiest problem for us to fix right now politically is the governor. Because if we had a governor that called out the speaker, then the speaker wouldn't be able to get away with what the speaker is doing. It all starts at the top. When you watch a football game, okay, ultimately, who do we blame if they lose? The quarterback. quarterback, coach, okay? I'm telling you right now, we have a horrible quarterback, we have a horrible coach in the state of Texas. The owner, yeah. <laughs> Jerry Jones, yeah. But if you want to have the biggest impact right now, if Greg Abbott, who has more money in his campaign account than any elected official in the country at the state level, every single person will be shaking in their boots. I'm just telling you. Yes, sir. By the way, you still in the special session that we all think is inevitable, but wake up, people. It's already a felony to cheat in an election. Okay? The problem here is not the law on the books. The problem is enforcement. And there are two individuals in this state that are responsible for enforcement. Okay? Number one is the governor because he appoints the secretary of state. The secretary of state is the one that is supposed to take all these dead people and illegals and cheaters off the voter rolls. Abbott keeps electing these nincompoops who won't do it. We don't have to have a piece of legislation or a bill to get him to appoint an SOS that actually cleans the voter rolls. I don't have to do that. We can do it by ourselves. Okay? And then law enforcement, at least most of the state law enforcement, is decided by the governor. Okay? The next person that's involved is the attorney general. Well, guess what Craig Abbott was before he was governor? The attorney general. Attorney general. Right now in the Attorney General's office, we have the budget for two election integrity lawyers out of over 800. Now, I'm not that good at math because I dropped out of high school, but two out of over 800, okay, is not putting any emphasis on protecting our elections. And I'm just telling you guys right now that we can pass whatever bill we want, Chris, but until people are in jail for cheating, which we know that they are, then it doesn't matter what they pass, okay? Like, I was there when we passed, last, last session, we passed a bill that said, it is against the law to kill a child at 40 weeks. Remember when New York passed a sweeping abortion bill and they allowed for a child to be killed up to 40 weeks? Then we came out and said, we passed a law that said, we're not going to do that. It was already illegal. We already passed it. They're going to come to you in a few weeks. Bill King eventually is going to speak at something, and you're going to hear that we passed a, a, a strong spending limits bill. We passed that bill every session I was there. These people are playing games with all of this stuff. They're repassing things to make you think that they're doing something. How many of you have seen Greg Abbott run on, we secured the border, we did border security? Yeah. Is anyone buying that? Religious freedom. Oh my gosh, that's the, the best one. To Andy's point, like, literally the only thing the religious liberty bills do is undo what Greg did with an executive order. Which he shouldn't have been able to do according to the Constitution anyways. Exactly. I really am excited about some of these questions and the look on some of your faces because I think you guys get what I'm talking about. Okay? What I want you to leave with just beyond this information is to feel empowered. 
that not only can you as one person make a difference in this process, but there are people waiting to see you do that. Okay? Like you're not going to have to work hard to matter. Just a couple of months ago, Andy Hopper was like, I'm thinking about starting a group. Now every single statewide elected official in Texas is watching his tweets on the daily. In just a couple of months. You can do it too. We're not talking about anything crazy here. You need to pray about what you have been given the skills to do. Okay? Let's be realistic here. I'm not ever going to be like a marathon runner. <laughs> so I shouldn't pretend to be. Okay? Um, some of us are not going to be massive donors. Okay? Some of us can't walk the blocks like we need to. But every single one of us has something that we can do that can make an impact. And the awesome thing about this group is, is that Andy is here to help plug you into things to make you efficient. We're not alone. This is the start of a movement. In fact, I was talking to a buddy who was speaking at another event at a brand new group down in Harris County that's going on right now. Something is happening. We are running out of time. Let's, let's keep praying about all of this stuff. These are spiritual battles that we fight. And let's be obedient with what the Lord has blessed us with. And, and I just think that Texas can rise again. We can lead this nation and we can save the free world. And we can do it together. God bless all of you. I hope you enjoyed tonight. And uh, hope that you keep coming back with a friend next time to Wise County Conservatives. God bless. run for office, you realize you don't trust anybody in politics. And so one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is if you're going to get out there and call Dion, do not say you're in wise conservatives. All right? I don't want anyone in, in any level of uh, the Republican Party mining the list of people that are in this group. So let me give you her number if you're inclined to call her now or if you already made a decision. Um, I've already told her that I'm 100% behind that. Dion Starr's number, and she said it's fine to call. 940-300-8502. Give her your name and say you live in Wise County. Well, maybe don't say that. She figured it out. She asked you to maybe give that. All right? She is the State Republican Executive Committee Chairwoman for SD30. So it's the 14 counties all around, you know, same district that uh, we ran last September with Shelly and Drew and all that. Yes, 940. Come on. 940-300-8502. All right. I'd like to say, uh, Manny, could you put up a little piece of paper over here? And if you are interested in block walking, please sign up on the way out the door. I think that's it. Yes, ma'am. There's two. Yes, I'll send that out on email. I don't have his number. Okay. okay. Hey, Sean, you want to go up and close this in prayer? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together and to fellowship and to gain understanding and truth. Lord, I pray that in these times that we see that, that, that the, the government is doing what the government does, dear Heavenly Father, that, that the people see it and start rising up against it, dear Heavenly Father, to stand for righteousness, your word, dear Heavenly Father, according to your word. This country was founded on the biblical principles of your word, dear Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I pray that that be the stalwart. I pray that that be the, 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 the platform that we bounce from, dear Heavenly Father, the platform that we go from. Lord, I pray blessings over these people. I pray blessings over Jonathan and Andy and everyone else that's getting involved with this, Lord. I pray blessings over them. I pray for your holy and gracious name. We thank you and give you all praise going on in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 amen.